Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we'll look at how you can join a word or a letter up with an illustration in Photoshop. This video was prompted by a subscriber who asked me how they could join up the word doctor, the letter R, to a stethoscope, how that could be done. So the first thing that I did was I went online to have a look at stethoscope images. I've chosen my favorite stock site, which is Deposit Photos. I've downloaded this particular piece of stock. What I was looking for was something that was fairly simple so it would conceivably join up with a piece of type. I also was looking for something that had a sort of even line so there's not a lot of dimension in this line. It doesn't change to be thick or thin. So I think this was probably a pretty good choice for me. Now I've already opened that file up in Photoshop. It's an EPS file. When you open an EPS file in Photoshop, you get a choice of the size. The first time I opened it, it was a little bit small. So you can actually increase the size. So you get this little dialogue. Let me just show you this. Let me close this down and let's go and open it again. So here's the EPS file. I'm going to open it. And here is my choice of size. At the moment, the width and height are pretty small. So I'm going to double it. So I'm going to type 14. 42 here that doubles the width and the height so I'll click OK so this is a larger version of it that will just give me a bit of a more even edge rather than having to rescale it quite high so I'm going to select this part of the image you can see it's just a bitmap image everything's on the one layer I'll choose edit copy and then go to my illustration I'm working in and edit and paste so here is the illustration we're working in. Now it's facing in the wrong direction. It's easy enough to flip with Edit Transform and then I'll choose Flip Horizontal. So this is pretty much the Sessica scope I want to join up to. But of course this font is not lending itself to joining up. It would be better if I chose a better font. So I'm going to the Type tool. I'm going to select over my type and let's go and have a look and see what the possibilities are in terms of fonts. What I'm looking for as I'm going through my font list is something that has the same thickness throughout the letter. This is probably a pretty good font for that. It's just that it's not going to lend itself to joining up very well. I thought a script style font would be pretty good choice and I found what I wanted down here in the F. So here it is. It's called Fox in the Snow. Now the reason why I chose this was because it was a really nice sort of handwriting font and also because I thought that I could join this letter R up with the stethoscope. It's not going to join automatically but we can get a good result here. The first thing I need to reassure myself is that the thickness of the stethoscope and the line itself and the type is pretty good. It's a pretty good match. So I'm just going to bring this across and just see how they look. I'm thinking it probably is a reasonably good match. Just the stethoscope could be a bit thicker. This line weight is a little bit thicker, which means either I increase the stethoscope image or I decrease the font. Or I could do both. I could take up the stethoscope a little bit and then reduce the font size just a little bit and then they should match. I'll drop that down to 380. No, I think I've gone too far now. Let's try 400. I think that's a pretty good look. So having done that, I'm now going to place these elements roughly where I think they'll go. Now we've already decided that this is a bitmap and this is type. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the type another color until I actually need it to be the same color as the stethoscope. So let's go to the type tool. Let's select over the type. It's just going to be a bit easier to work with if it's a different color to the stethoscope. So I'm just going to make it red. Now I'm going to place the stethoscope roughly in position, but I don't need the dot on the end of it, so I'm actually going to erase that. So let's go and get the eraser tool and just erase it. And then we'll go and place the stethoscope roughly where we want it to be. Then I'm just going to pencil in or brush in the line so that I'm clear that things are actually going to join up before I actually go and do the work. So I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to choose a different color. This time I'll choose, for example, a green. I'm going to the brush tool. I'm going to set it to a small round brush. So here is a round brush, very hard, and it's fairly small. So what I'm going to do is just pick up the sweep of this letter and just see where it's going to join up to the stethoscope. 
So I'm thinking that something like that is going to be a pretty good join. I'll move that behind everything so that I've just got it sitting there. I'm going to continue the sweep of this letter, maybe adjust this a little bit, but I don't need the end of the stethoscope right now because that's just not going to work for me at all. So let's just go and remove the stethoscope. In fact, in this case, it would be a good idea to remove the stethoscope pretty much up to where that loop is. Next up, we need to deal with the type. And right now, this is editable type. So we need to convert it from editable type into something that we can actually edit using things like the pen tool and the direct selection tool. So we're going to select type and we'll go to convert to shape. Now we'll go to the direct selection tool and you can see that the type is now a path. So let's zoom into the area that we're sort of interested in. I'm holding the spacebar as I move it to just get it into position. And let's go and see what we can do now in terms of making a selection over this point or these sets of points here. And let's just start dragging. So what I want to do is join that up here. But of course, it's not got this sweep in it. Well, we can add the sweep by adding some anchor points. So I'm going to add an anchor point here and then go back to this direct selection tool and then just pull this out. And we're just going to make it a bend. We'll also need to move these points here too. So it's probably best just to focus on one side and get the join on one side that you sort of like so that then you can go back and then do the second side. You want your anchor points to be in pretty much the same position so that the line is going to bend. Now I haven't done the world's most perfect job. That's something that you can do and just perfect the join. But that's the sort of approach that I would take to it. I can turn the green off now because I don't need it any longer. I have got a slight lump happening here at the end. So let's go back to the direct selection tool and let's see if we can fix the lump on the end here. I think it's just caused by a sort of slightly rounded end on the letter. So maybe I can grab all these pieces and all these anchor points here and just move them up a little bit so that the sort of rounded end disappears into the stethoscope. Let's just move this out a little bit. That's a better join now. Okay, so our word doctor is red and it needs to be black. Well, we'll just go and select over it and then we'll change its color. Because this is a shape, we can go to any of the shape tools and then just click on the fill and I'm just going to make it black. But of course, we could change its color. If we wanted to change this and make this all red, well, this is what we'll do. We'll go and select over the text because that is one object that we need to change. We can go up to the fill here and let's choose this red here. But to change the bitmap image, we're going to have to do something different. So I'm just going to lock this layer with this option here. This locks the transparent pixels on the layer so that only the non-transparent pixels can be edited. I'm going to just go and sample my red so I make sure I'm working with the exact same red. And because this layer is locked and it's bitmapped, I can press Alt Backspace, that would be Option Delete on the Mac, to fill the shape with the current foreground color and then I'll just unlock it. As you see, I could do a better job on this join. I could probably have done a better loop. But that's the basics of taking a piece of type, converting it to a shape so that then you can get access to all the anchor points. So then you can potentially join it up to something of your choice, making good choices along the way as to the font you're using and the object that you're trying to join it up to. Before we finish this video, I have more Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 200 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. Please feel free to share this coupon with family and friends. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that you've learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.